But how did you move? Did you move like by by yourself or a big team? I move. I move to this day with a large team. You know what I'm saying? I got us some apartments. I bought the whole complex, so everybody can have their own individual spot, and they still can have their kids and stuff like that. Like I, I, I think as a team, I never thought about myself. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I get, I make sure large quantities of people can live in that place. You know what I'm saying? I had a mansion before I did this, and it had 13 bedrooms in it. But I made sure all of us be together. Like when we die, I want we're gonna die together. Right. So at some point um, in another interview, you talked about you made $12 million in one year. Right. Right. So how did that come about? And, you know, how is how can you hide $12 million? <laughs> I wasn't. I, I actually made 12. Right. Because I was counting how much money I had made. Mm -hmm. But I only had like three. I only jewelry and cars and and clubs and that shit, clothes, jacket, like, like, if you make a million dollars, you're gonna spend probably like 300,000, 400,000 just making it mm -hmm. on everyday life. Like, even if you're taking your girl out to the to the restaurant, it costs money to, for the gas, for, like, so I just was counting my profits I made, you know what I'm saying? And I still was like, spending money at the same time, but every time I made money, I just checked like seven hundred fifty thousand, seven hundred fifty thousand, seven hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. So it got up to like fifteen times, twenty times. And I noticed like damn I made twelve million dollars. Right. Where the hell it went? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's it's easy to it's easy to spend it. <laughs> and it's easy to invest in, especially when you start investing in real estate and things of that matter. Like ain't no limit to how much money you can spend on real estate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no limit to how much money you can spend, period. So. So let's talk about your relationship with Young Scooter. At some point, you went, you were homeless and you were staying with him. Right. So how right. did your friendship come about? Um, I actually went to school with his little brother. His name Kyrie Broughton. You know what I'm saying? They call him K Blocker, Black Amigo K Blocker. And um, him and I was best friends in school. You know what I'm saying? He knew what I was going through. And I spent a night of his house. So actually, Scooter was always the big brother. He was like two, three years older than us at all times. So when um, K Blocker, he moved back to South Carolina. He got in a lot of trouble, you know what I'm saying? So he been in jail. He just been in jail more than me. I was just able to get blessed and get out. So when I got out of prison this last time, he was so happy that I got out. Young know, Scooter was so happy, so he came to my apartments. I had some apartments I had rented out like seven or eight units called Ashby Park. We called them bricks. And um, he came and see me one day, and he was telling me he was rapping. And I was like, shit, I want to rap too. And, you know, he just gave me his full support. I didn't even know you can charge people for features. And now that I charge 5000 a feature, I just think back at him, and I was like, damn, he gave me all them features for free. He gave me three, four features for free and did the videos. And, you know, the video costs even more. Mm -hmm. And he did everything for me, you know what I'm saying? And I just been so thankful for him doing those things, hooking me up with Future and stuff like that. And we just got real, real close, and I feel like I owe him the world. Right. And you even have, you paid Future for features before, right? For the deals and stuff. Right. Um, Future, you know, he he been on fire, you know yeah. what I'm saying, since he stepped in the door, you know what I'm saying, he been on fire. And um, I was trying to drop a mixtape, and Young Scooter was telling me, like, you need to um, get you a single. And I was like, what the hell is a single? It was like a song that um, that you can concentrate on to get in the clubs and get on the radio. I'm like, All right, I got a lot of them. And he was like, nah, you got to get one that everybody going to like, guaranteed. Like, I was like, everybody like me. He was like, nah, this is the whole world you talking about. I'm thinking about my neighborhood, so I said, man, that nigga Future got a lot of songs on the radio. I was like, tell him, give me a hook. <laughs> he was like, all right. He said, he gonna charge you though, bro. I was like, what he want? It was like, uh, he want 25000 So I was like, shit, what is that? Call him, tell him I need a feature. Um, he gave me a feature, and, and while we were doing the feature, he started like, Future started, like, he, he was hearing about me anyway. Of course, I ran in Atlanta. And then he started, like, like loving me, started getting closer and closer to me. And when he got closer and closer to me, he just, 
it just we just clicked. You know what I'm saying? We came we came closer to him and Scooter. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And you said that they took you seriously once they saw you at fine jewelry. <laughs> yeah, you know, the crazy thing and and that was future. That how future knew who I was in the studio, cause I already had started buying jewelry. Cause school was giving me the recipe to the game, like you gotta buy jewelry, you gotta get a singer, you gotta get this, you gotta get that, you gotta get this, and that was the number one thing he told me. And I was like, shit, I ain't know when you go in these country towns that what all the country people want to see, the jewelry and shit like that. So I started buying jewelry. I started buying a whole lot, the qualities, Rolexes and diamonds that you can get from the Diamond District, which is here in New York. And um, people started noticing, like, who the hell is that buying all that jewelry? And it kind of, like, put my put me on the scale. Nobody didn't even know I had the money that I had until I started buying that jewelry. Mm -hmm. So when you go seeing a dude with a hundred thousand dollar chain on, and you know this is the same chain Birdman got on, what the hell he doing with that chain? And it just started making a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, how'd you get into rap? I got into rap. Um, I used to be in prison. And, um, I used to listen to the radio. And I couldn't just listen to these niggas because they was talking about killing, shooting, and I know I got a life sentence over my head. And I'm like, man, they can't be they can't be they can't be talking about this shit because I know what this shit come with. So you can't be doing it. So I, I really can't even put my thought pattern in that. So I said, I'm going to just get the hell up out of here, and I'm going to start rapping. I want to listen to my damn self. So it was never for others to listen to. It just somehow everybody started tuning in. And once I started investing so much money in it, I said, shit, I got to become successful in this. Um, now, who was, like, the person that kind of inspired you to, to start pursuing it more so hardcore? World star. Really? The comments on World Star, they just, they just did me so wrong. Tell, talking about my voice real heavy, you know what I'm saying, and telling me I wasn't about that life, and telling me I ain't nothing, and just downgrading me, you know what I'm saying. When I throw up my first video with Young Scooter, and I was looking at them people, I was like, do they even know how many people I take care of? Do they know how many people I shot or? Where I come from, for real, like, I'm from prison, like, prison, I took over the whole compounds. I got in a shootout with police. How could you disrespect me like that? Telling me I ain't about that life, I ain't sold no dope, I made $12 million. Oh, yeah, y'all gonna do me like that? So it's just, like, anything that, like, downed me, it made me stronger. It made me want to conquer. It made me want to go hard, you know what I'm saying? And that just... It just made me lose my temper tantrum and I was in the game.